Endometriosis is a disease where cells similar to those lining the womb grow elsewhere in the body. They behave in a similar way to the womb lining, so they swell and shed with the monthly cycle, but they can't leave the body. I'm Emma Cox, Chief Executive at Endometriosis UK. We consulted with the endometriosis community and it was really clear that people wanted to have more information about surgery. Surgery is one of the treatments for endometriosis, others being hormone treatment and pain management that treat the symptoms. Common symptoms of endometriosis include chronic pelvic pain, uh, severe period pain that interferes with your day-to-day -day life, painful bowel movements, pain when urinating, pain during or after sex, um, difficulty getting pregnant and also can cause fatigue. Many with endometriosis will also have heavy menstrual bleeding. Despite many people not having heard of endometriosis, it is really common and that's over one and a half million in the UK and it's towards 200 million globally. It's a common condition. We don't know what causes endometriosis and currently there's no cure. At a preoperative assessment, the main purpose of that appointment is to make sure that you're fit for surgery. They will be doing your height and weight, they'll do your blood pressure, they will um, probably take some blood to check that you're not anemic and all these sorts of things. They want to make sure that you're fit for surgery and that you're generally fit and well. Once you've had the pre-op assessment and the nurse has given you some idea of how long you might be staying in hospital and what your recovery might be, um, it's a good idea to prepare things at home for when you get home after the surgery. So things like having a good supply of paracetamol and ibuprofen if that's something that you can take. So there are different methods of performing surgery for endometriosis. Surgeon will often assess with the patient what would be the most appropriate way to perform surgery. Most surgeries nowadays are performed by laparoscopy, which is also known as keyhole surgery, during which the surgeon will make small cuts in the abdominal wall of the patient whilst the patient is asleep and um, small instruments will be inserted through little holes alongside a camera and that will give the surgeon a view in the pelvis of the patient and the abdomen to see where endometriosis is and then to treat it. Now some patients occasionally may require open surgery uh, with a larger cut in the abdomen that depends upon the type of endometriosis sometimes, or maybe the patient might have some other coexisting conditions. And with the current advancements in the cutting edge technology, there are some accredited endometriosis surgeons who can also perform endometriosis surgery with using a robotic assisted device. During surgery for endometriosis, uh, the surgeon's aim is to first of all identify where the endometriosis lesions are localized and then to either cut them out, which is also called excision, or in some cases um, the surgeon may decide to destroy the lesions by using heat. At the current moment, most of the surgeries are done laparoscopically, which is also known as keyhole surgery. Robotic surgery involves the surgeon using a robotic assisted device to perform operation for endometriosis treatment. The surgeon will use the same method as with keyhole surgery um, in terms of making small little cuts in the abdomen and inserting specific instruments. The difference is that those instruments are held by the robotic assisted component. The surgeon will be sitting in a console uh, fully immersed, looking into the surgical field or the pelvis where endometriosis is located. Although robotic surgery is becoming more common, it's not available everywhere, and it may not be suitable for each and every patient depending upon the characteristics of endometriosis or other health conditions. So once surgery's over, you'll be taken through to the recovery room. Again, someone will always be with you um, while you're under anaesthetic and while you're being brought out of anaesthetic. As you're brought out of anaesthetic, you're, it's very normal to feel quite disorientated initially. 
um, and you'll feel a bit woozy. You'll have some discomfort probably from the um, wounds on your abdomen. You'll probably have a cannula in your hand or your arm, which is a small tube in the vein, which may be attached to some fluids. And you're probably going to have a catheter in as well. So you'll be attached to various things. Um, but someone will be with you who'll be able to explain what's happening. You might feel a bit of discomfort and sickness, but again, there'll be someone with you who'll be able to give you any medication that you need in response to any symptoms that you have. They should also signpost you to how to access help afterwards if you have any later concerns once you get home. You may be able to go home on the same day if the surgery was straightforward and quite often laparoscopic and robotic surgery is done as a day case. Um, but sometimes you might need to stay in hospital depending on how you're recovering. Um, you might need to stay in for one day overnight um, or possibly if the surgery is more complex, it might be sort of two to five days. Once you're back at home after surgery, it's quite normal to feel quite exhausted by the whole experience. You might have some abdominal pain. If the surgery is laparoscopic or robotic, then it's quite common to fill your abdomen with gas, um, which then takes a little bit of time to dissipate. So you can have a bit of bloating and a bit of abdominal discomfort. Physical symptoms, quite common to have some discomfort from the abdominal wounds, which can take a little bit of time to heal. You can have some abdominal um, discomfort and bloating and also some crampy sort of period-like discomfort and some vaginal bleeding is quite common, which can last for, a, you know, a few days up to a week or so. Should gradually ease off over time, be getting gradually better as the days go by. Hopefully you'll have been given information about what to look out for, so signs of infection or any concerns. If you're worried that you're not recovering as quickly as you would have expected to, or if any new symptoms occur, then you should be signposted before your discharge from hospital um, about how to get in touch with someone at the hospital to ask advice. Um, alternatively, you can always speak to your GP or contact Endometriosis UK who have a lot of information and support through helplines. My name's Elaine Remy and I've had a surgery for endometriosis. My experience of surgery was really positive. There's a multidisciplinary team beforehand. They explain things really well to me. So I was really prepared for, for, for the big day. I was actually quite surprised because um, I felt quite relaxed. What I really expected was that I would not have a, a life anymore where I had lots of pain and lots of sickness. I really did hope that I could get back to having a normal life. I've not been in any pain or had any sickness. I very first started symptoms when I was 14 years old and that was started with really heavy painful periods but over time progressed to really painful bowel movements, painful sex, um, throwing up for a good chunk of the month. It meant that I just wasn't able to live my life and so it kind of felt like almost a decision that I didn't really have to make. It was, it, it felt very much like the only option I had left. And I think for me, it's proved to give me back my life a little bit more, which has been really positive. But I think it's important to say I have had six surgeries. I just had my sixth five weeks ago. Um, most of my surgeries that I've had historically have been um, traditional laparoscopies where they do the three or four little holes in your tummy with the camera. Um, I tend to get a, usually a couple of years of really good relief before I start to get symptoms back again. My latest surgery that I had five weeks ago was a robotically assisted surgery and that meant that it's controlled by a surgeon in a separate part of the theatre who's manipulating these tools on a console that gives them this amazing field of view and in-depth ability to look at really precise little areas of your body. 